Hello, and welcome to the Venda Museum. Uh, my name is Jamie Kwan, curator of one of our current exhibitions, Deconstructing Ideology, the Cultural Revolution and Beyond. Um, thank you for joining us today for this exhibition related program, Art and Ideology, a conversation with artist Zhang Hong Tu, who currently has uh, two works up in our show. Uh, one of his iconic Quaker Oats Mao and his Mao dress, which was a collaboration with the fashion designer Vivian Tam. Uh, he is an artist who has exhibited internationally at venues that include the Princeton University Art Museum, uh, the Museo Picasso in Barcelona, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, the Guggenheim in New York, and he's also had a major monographic retrospective at the Queens Museum in New York. His works are currently in the collection of many institutions, including the National Museum of Art, Beijing, the Guangzhou Art Museum, the Bronx Museum of the Arts, Princeton University Art Museum, and the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi. Um, Hong Tu, also Hong Tu, if you would like to turn your camera and uh, audio on. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. It is such an honor to be able to feature your works as part of our exhibition and to have you participate in our programming. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think the, this exhibition is so important right now. And uh, I'll be now also invited to participate in uh, this exhibition. I feel so honored. Uh, one of the reasons I said uh, important because the cultural revolution happened in China, but now, still banned by the government. Nobody can talk anything about cultural revolution. So I feel so, so important so for, for, for this exhibition. And just like more people know what happened in China and what is uh, uh, the meaning for the world. And I think your works, especially the Quaker Oats Mao, is, are so such great ways to illustrate um, what was going on in China in terms of the arts, in terms of the national consciousness, in terms of the cult of personality, um, and how enduring this is, you know, even decades after. Um, and so just a few uh, housekeeping notes before we begin. Um, we will be holding a question and answer session at the end of the conversation. So if you have any questions that come up during the program or doing, during the Q&A, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box that is uh, at the bottom of your screen. And we will try to get to as many of them as possible. Uh, we have about an hour today, so we will be talking for about 45 to 50 minutes and we'll leave the rest of the time for the Q&A. Um, and so, to begin the conversation, um, Hong Tu, can you tell us more about your background and your family life and basically your early artistic training? You know, give us give us your origin story, if you will. Uh, I was born in China, uh, Gansu province, in a small town called Pingliang. I was, uh, I was born in 1943. Uh, it's a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> not, not so long. <laughs> but, but, but a, a little bit different with other of my uh, uh, the same generation in my age. Uh, uh, I was born in a Chinese Muslim family. Uh, they can consider as a minority in China. Um, um, so, uh, but I just found my, my, my parents um, travel a lot. Uh, I was born in 1943, but uh, it was uh, 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 even the Second World War, not, not done yet, not finished yet. Uh, but after the after Second World War, you know, the, it was a civil war. So we just uh, traveled from, from Gansu, uh, Shanxi, Shanghai, Nanjing, Suzhou, Zhengzhou. And uh, early for 1950, we set up in Beijing. In the, uh, so uh, that's basically my family back background. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, uh, you know my, you know my age. So you you also can count. Um, my age made me six years older than the communist country, uh, uh, communist <laughs> China. <laughs> so in this case, I really know what happened in China. I, I mean, the new China. So that's that's that. I, uh, I mentioned about that because that's related to all my other work, my 
with the political meaning, with the social meaning, there's a kind of relationship with my, my, my age. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense because you were not just a child during the Cultural Revolution, but you were, you know, an adult. You were in your, I'm trying to do math really quickly. Um, you were in yeah, uh, your 20s yeah. and 30s. Yeah, you yeah, are 20s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so you mentioned that your family was Muslim uh, and, you know, the relationship uh, of the government to religion in China was very, you know, it still is very fraught. Um, how did that affect, uh, you know, your life, but also did that affect your art practices in any way? Or how did, you know, what role did that play in your life? Oh, yes, you know, <clears throat> effective on both my life, <clears throat> my family situation, uh, and uh, later my art. And um, uh, because uh, as a Muslim in China, uh, uh, followed by Mao's idea, Mao followed by from Karl Marx's idea, uh, so-called uh, uh, the religion is the, the opium for people. So, but for Mao, he physically destroyed all the religions, but he kept one God, which is himself. <laughs> He, he, he make a, he make a, like a vacuum, really, really, people have no belief, but in the same, same time, especially during the Cultural Revolution, he made himself as a god. So that's, um, the bad influence to me is, um, made me not really trust the older generation. Because when Mao said, uh, okay, we will, uh, uh, as 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 young people, you guys all the like uh, like the sun rising in the horizon in the morning. That means uh, all the young people have a future, a bright future. In the, uh, uh, you just uh, follow my um, step. But actually, he made himself as a sun rising in the in, in, in the horizon, make people to worship him. Um, but another thing. Is a, to me is a positive, made me think more about what is what is a, um, um, the image of the power. The, I believe in the power of the image, but the, I don't believe in the authority of the image. Mm. That's major uh, major positive impact to me. So it influences them my, not only my work, also how to look at the world, how to look at my past life, how to look at my future life. I see, that's, I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear how the relationship between religion and the cult of personality and how that really got you thinking about or maybe how it, it turned you off of religion. Um, uh, maybe, maybe you can, can, can I stop you? Maybe we can give you an example. Uh -huh. Because, because uh, people probably, um, if, you don't, if you don't really ex experience the cultural revolution, I think with some, 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 something really happened, like a story, like personal experience, maybe you can into what I talked about in the future about my, my work. Okay, that's that happened in nineteen later nineteen sixty six, the first year of the Cultural Revolution. A lot of our students uh, get together in a school uh, playground to listen listen to some document document from the government because that's the that's what we studied every day. People sit on the on the, on the ground, but I heard it, it's not too far for me. I heard people said. Beat, beat this counter revolutionary. This guy beat by at least 10 people, blood all over his body. But what really happened, because he was sitting on the ground and uh, he used the newspaper as uh, something to, to, to uh, put on the ground. So he, he, he directly sit on the newspaper, but uh, the newspaper printed with Chairman Mao's image. And that time, now any single day without the Chairman Mao's image on newspaper. So any newspaper printed Mao's image. So people, this, 
uh, other people just uh, said, uh, okay, this guy dare to sit on Chairman Mao's face. Wow. Or also die, but you, you, you cannot stop them. It's just, it's crazy. So this really, really, this situation, you know, this uh, 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 happening really make me rethink about uh, what is the, uh, uh, what is the power of a, of an image? Mm -hmm. Even now, especially that's uh, uh, I remember you also asking me about the religious influence. That's also related to my religious background, mm -hmm. because uh, now uh, Muslim uh, Islamic idea uh, not create any uh, image right. uh, except the God, but the God has no image. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, <clears throat> Um, but of, of course, when I come to this country, I know more about Muslim, I know more about what happened in the Middle East. I know this, this, kind, of, this, this kind of cult personality is changed. It happened mm -hmm. everywhere, no matter what kind of uh, uh, religions. But uh, it, it cannot happen to communist idea because communists, they all say, we do everything for people. We just like a, like a, like a Norman people. We come from uh, from 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 uh, uh, from from um, countryside. We come we just like you. We are the same, but actually, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we think it. Yeah, became... yeah. So that, that's also also if the anytime if the image with power is is understandable, but if the image be, become a religious icon, it can be very, very terrible. It can, it can be, I mean, the, our exhibition is about sort of the power of the image and, and iconography and, and how that, and how powerful it, it was and it, its mm -hmm. afterlife. So um, it, it is quite scary as you describe it. Um, and so I'm, I'm very curious, what made you choose to become an artist, especially since you came from this background, this Muslim background where, you know, you're forbidden to make images um, of living things. And um, how did you, how did you go on this path? And what was your early, what was your training like um, before the Cultural Revolution and, and during the Cultural Revolution? Yeah, no, think, uh, <clears throat> since I have a uh, normal uh, great grandpa, uh, I have one son, two granddaughters. So, since I become grandpa, I know most of the kids they have an interest in with the draw picture. That's before the language express language scale. That's one way to express themselves. So I'm not different. I just uh, draw a picture when I was very very, very young, <laughs> uh, like uh, three or four years old. Uh, but I continue this kind of interest. I continue interest in with the color with the images. Uh, uh, and uh, eventually I go to art school when I was uh, 16 years old. As a pretty young, 16, as a, uh, started my uh, high school. Mm. Uh, fortunately, the high, uh, this high school was, uh, was called a uh, high school attached to Central Academy of Fine Arts, which is uh, actually, uh, uh, even the high school, but it's all the, uh, the uh, the art major. So I already started uh, kind of like a, uh, seriously started uh, art. Uh, but um, but the, the meaning of art in China and the meaning of art over here is totally different. Totally, totally different. Mm -hmm. The meaning of, uh, of art in China, which is uh, we learned from the teacher, art is a is tools, it's, it's, the, it's tools, art, you, any kind of art has to serve the communist party. And uh, art is uh, just like uh, uh, the revolution, revolution, revolutionary machine, a, a, a screw, a screw in the revolutionary machine. Like Lei Feng. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're part, you're part of the revolutionary the machine, you know. I also really don't understand the machine like uh, made of steel, made, made of air, made, made of, well, we are, <laughs> we are human beings. But, but I, under this kind of uh, different definition about art, 
much later. When I was in school, you know, 16, 17 years old, which is the father's teacher. So this kind of brainwash education made me trust the, I have to learn what the teacher taught me because only this kind of what we call the socialist realism style can make me become a school, can make my art become propaganda art to use by the government. Until um, 1966, two years after I was in school, because this, this, this is a long story, because in, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I didn't talk about uh, the, the political background. 1980, 1957 is an anti-rightist uh, movement. My father became a writer. And in 1958, it's a, a big leap forward. So we don't have any uh, class. We just, uh, what, what are we doing? Is, uh, we go to street to, 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 to pick up the, any metal stuff, bring to school, try to make a, a, a air, to, to make a steel. Of course, we did nothing. We did all, all the garbage. But uh, that makes China change a lot because most China almost uh, almost destroyed, and um, he opened the country a little bit for people to give give people. I don't want to use freedom this word. It's not really freedom. Mm. For example, just uh, you can see some artwork uh, maybe from old China. You can see some work uh, with uh, uh, realistic style, but uh, from European country. So um, not only uh, socialist, uh, social, so socialist really thick style, uh, uh, social really thick style, uh, not only style, but uh, so-called other <clears throat> style. We only see see them from magazines because that time we still can read magazines from from East European country, mm. like uh, like uh, uh, East European like uh, uh, Czech or uh, Hungary, uh, uh, this kind of country. We learn, to me, I learned something. I know something uh, different with, with what I learned in school from those magazines. You can print as small as, uh, as the stems, but, uh, but it's different. The colors are different, the way to, 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 to use a brush different. That's made me really want to know more about what happened outside of China. Um, and I mean, the Cultural Revolution and Maoist China is really marked by the restriction on access to foreign media and you know the different types of subjects and styles that were allowed. And so was it what was it like when you moved to America in 1982 um, and just having this exposure to, I mean, you were in New York too, of all the places to be. Um, what, what was that like? And what were your impressions of, of the Western cultural scene versus the one you had experienced in China? And, and what was your experience of just seeing New York in the 80s and, and the vibrancy of the arts there? Um, <clears throat> you know, because the Cultural Revolution made me really want to leave China. After, after Cultural Revolution. So I come to New York, uh, it's not really 100% my choice. Uh, just like a, like a board, if you open the gate, the door of the gate, the board just go out. That's that time I feel about my my, my, my new life. So, uh, so when I go in, in, in this kind of uh, like a feeling, when I come to New York, I, I feel happy every day. I feel like uh, I'm back to my childhood. I see everything is uh, so exciting. I, I really don't care about uh, my, my physical life. Of, I came to New York myself. My, my wife and my son still in China. Uh, so uh, they worried me about uh, a lot, but I don't worry, me, uh, I, I don't worry myself any, <laughs> anything. I just uh, enjoy the new society, new friend, new, uh, new, new, everything new. And also, I learned a little bit about, uh, I, learned, I know a little bit about uh, uh, Western, uh, not contemporary, but modern art, especially mm -hmm. like uh, we know more 
about the uh, impressionism, post-impressionism, but from from book, from translated, uh, the book translated in, 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 in Chinese. We, uh, before I came to this country, I never saw any original work uh, by, uh, with, with the style of uh, uh, impressionism or post-impressionism. Even, even Picasso, Picasso in China is okay, because he was a Communist Party <laughs> member. And he, 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 he made an image of a, of a pigeon for, um, for Asian Pacific uh, Peace Conference, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a poster. Mm -hmm. This poster printed everywhere in Beijing. So I, I, I saw this one, I know this Picasso's work. I thought it was so easy. <laughs> Not, we, we, we trained much harder than Picasso's training. Uh, because because of the genius definitely the, I saw his young younger the, his teenager work is very good but we turned the way it's different with the, most of the American student training we can make a, um, uh, the realistic style very, very close uh, with uh, Renaissance style but the big problem is big problem was you cannot do anything just even just a little bit different with your teacher. You have to follow only your teacher's idea. But your teacher, some teacher, maybe they learn from uh, 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 the expert, the teacher from Soviet Union. Or some teacher, they sent by the government, uh, by government to Russia, to Soviet Union to learn the same style. Then they back to China, they teach us in the exact same style. So, <clears throat> So in this case, you can imagine, you imagine I go to museum, I go to a gallery, it's also very exciting. Even many artworks I don't really understand, especially this kind of like a, a, a conceptual art. But uh, conceptual art, even I, I don't understand, but it made me uh, very exciting because I thought, oh, this is also art. But what's behind the, uh, uh, the image, what's behind the world, on the canvas. So I brought a, a dictionary with me, a, a bilingual di dictionary with me to go to museum uh, <laughs> to try to understand the, the work. But anyway, um, um, I just like, uh, how to say, just like, uh, like a kid, just want to, uh, want to try to understand everything, uh, uh, keep, keep my curiosity all, all the time. And, um, did you have a favorite museum um, or artist that you were really interested in learning about during this, you know, early time in New York? And okay, so uh, for the big name of uh, impressionism artists, I already knew. I, I don't want to talk about. I even uh, uh, know know them uh, before before my move to uh, to to America. But uh, when I moved to here, uh, I can recall three artists. Uh, uh, made me uh, feel uh, really surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, one is uh, directly, visually, uh, make me surprised was uh, uh, the German artist, the, the uh, Anselm Kiefer, mm -hmm. uh, so-called uh, uh, the New York Impress New York Impressionism, because his style, his material, not that strange uh, to me. Not like uh, I never saw it. Uh, familiar and uh, uh, with some images and also uh, 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 this kind of emotion uh, visual impact uh, uh, I can share uh, the very very dark uh, landscape uh, anyway I don't want to talk too much be be everything else and some cave and uh, the second one was Duchamp Master Duchamp not because I like his art, I understand him immediately, but because the art teacher taught us in, in China what the whole bad was the uh, Western art. Duchamp was, a, was an example. And, <laughs> and everybody be, believe that. Very simple. He showed a picture, which is, a, a, how to say, your, urine, urine. The urinal. Urine. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? It's urine. The teacher said, yes, but this museum work. Can you believe? We, we, 
<laughs> oh, well, of course, we, 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 we try to trust him. But uh, that, that made me become a big question. Why I don't think that now Western people are that stupid. They don't know anything, but they put a uh, urine in a museum. Now any other, uh, other artwork I can show in a museum. So I saw this work. Um, uh, it's not the urine itself. It's a turnover. And with the new name called the uh, fountain, fountain, fountain. Mm -hmm. yeah, with a new uh, name, not artist name. Then I can read some book, not in English, but uh, translated in Chinese by uh, uh, from published in, in, in Hong Kong and in Taiwan. But I can read it all, all here in, in New York. So I know a little bit uh, and a little bit more, a little bit more about. Uh, uh, Duchamp's idea from um, by the art history, uh, why he said uh, painting died, why he doesn't like painting if a painting only please people's people's retina, retina, yeah. and uh, that made me feel very, very interesting, and uh, so I know uh, Duchamp more and more later. And the second one is uh, um, Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. I went to the uh, uh, Metropolitan Museum. I saw Andy Warhol's work. Uh, I went to one show, I, I don't remember which year. Huge Andy Warhol's silk screen. Two things made me surprised and, and also uh, uh, confused. Why? is the size. The size is almost as big as the mouse image in the Tiananmen, Tiananmen Gate. And secondly, it's the material. It's not, not so many hand painted. It's like a silk screen. In China, we don't consider a silk screen as a fine art. So this, that's just like a, make a print, make a, a, a decorative. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a metropolitan museum. So the, in the same way, I started uh, reading, started, uh, started, uh, started read a book about uh, Andy Warhol. I went to museum. And and uh, and later, uh, my son uh, went to uh, Pittsburgh for for his uh, study. Also went over uh, south uh, visit the uh, Andy Warhol Museum. So little bit by little bit, and now more and uh, more, and finally I fall in love with those artists. <laughs> <laughs> you fell in love with the you you saw the beauty of the urinal <laughs> after. <laughs> Yes, learning about it as, as yeah, bad they, art. <laughs> yes, but the most importantly to me, it's not the single artwork. Work. For example, if Duchamp's urine is destroyed by somebody, I'm not going to say sorry. I don't. I don't feel pity now because his 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 idea reminds right. exactly. You and you work with himself now. His painting can sold a billion billion dollars. I thought that's that's that's, that's ridiculous. Everybody can reprint with his screen. Reprint brush, some brushes can can make fake and the exactly the same with original. But his idea how to mix uh, the boundary between life and art, how to uh, brew the, uh, how to make the uh, godlike uh, uh, icon image down to the earth, this kind of idea. Give me very, very positive influence. Mm. I mean, and it's especially relevant considering the godlike treatment of of the chair, of Chairman Mao, which yes, and I think yes, exactly. you did you do a lot of that in your early work. Um, so could you speak more about your uh, your work on dealing with the chairman and bringing down this godlike figure with uh, your mm -hmm. Material Mao series and your Quaker Oats Mao's? Um, mm -hmm. And I think you do have a PowerPoint um, to to share with us that has some of these works. Mm -hmm. Well, so I, I would love to hear more about um, the genesis <laughs> of these works and your thoughts behind them. Okay, uh, can we show the quick quick mark, uh, quick 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 quick, uh, quick uh, first? Yeah, because the, the reason to show this one first because this one now become part of my mouse series, but uh, actually when I do this one, I didn't. Start this series, more series, the material more series. This one start, start, started started nineteen eighty seven. My more series started nineteen eighty nine. Uh, when I do this one, 
uh, in my studio, I didn't really seriously consider it as my uh, studio work. Uh, uh, because in 1987, the year was my fifth year in New York. I still uh, uh, struggled with uh, uh, how to uh, how to how to how to how to make make something new, make how to create my new work, and uh, basically I just want to forget everything, everything happened in China. I don't want to do anything with political meaning. I don't want to do anything uh, made me uh, rethink about what happened in China because that's that was my my nightmare. I don't want to recall anything. But uh, one day in the morning, I. Eat breakfast, uh, I saw this um, quickles. Uh, I eat quickles a lot at that time. I saw the quickles. I found that the, 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 the old guy in the box just looks like Chairman Mao. You nobody paint, nobody add anything. This original quickles box uh, image like Chairman Mao. Even the way painted on the face, the red face, the smiling face. Uh, uh, also like Chairman Mao. So after breakfast, uh, I just spent a few minutes uh, at uh, Chairman Mao's head and uh, uh, make, 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 make the red color on the background. Made, even made, me, made, made myself surprised uh, it is Chairman Mao. Uh, so, but uh, the question is, I consider later because people, people keep on asking me, why are American people eat quickers? more than 100 years, nobody related uh, quicker uh, to uh, Chairman Mao. I thought it's a very good question because, uh, yes, I painted a very short time. I don't need to you know, uh, stretch my canvas. I don't need to put any uh, brushes. But, but it, the idea come, I mean, yes, I can use the idea, this word. The idea come to me was a long time uh, uh, is, is, is a, how to say, is from my life experience in China because of Cultural Revolution, because the, the most image was everywhere. Even after Cultural, Cultural Revolution, in, well, I left in 1982. Mouse image still everywhere. Even the government already said, already said, uh, okay, we don't. Uh, 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 cultural revolution is kind of like a chaos, uh, but Tiananmen mouse image still in Tiananmen Gate. Tiananmen mouse dead body still in Tiananmen Square, and uh, uh, so as a image, Tiananmen mouse influence still there. So to me, even I don't, I, I don't think the cultural revolution stuff is gone. Cultural revolution is not, not finished yet. So this kind of uh, um, uh, image influence made me just want to do something upside. I, I tried to, to do something, delete, delete this image from my, my, my mind. So American people you know, saw this image, image more than hundred years, but uh, they saw the old guy in the cup. They, they have no ex experience, personal experience to relate the Mao to China Mao. I'm the one from China. I live in Mao's uh, uh, area. I'm now Mao's um, year for a long, long, long time. So that's the result. This is not a result of my uh, painting scale, but also a result of my life experience. Right. It's, so it's, after this one, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't really uh, concentrate on Mao's work. But uh, uh, until 1989, now a uh, student go to Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square uh, to uh, require for uh, um, democracy. Uh, they, uh, but uh, the government's tank now kill hundred thousand students. Uh, that made me think about uh, my art. Uh, artists during that time 
even they do something to support students, but actually very weak, very weak. Nothing really um, can change the situation. So uh, in New York City, we have some uh, uh, some group of artists. We try to uh, now uh, raising money uh, to give to the uh, Tiananmen now. Uh, the squares, Tiananmen Square's student uh, will try to uh, rebuild uh, the, the God of Democracy sculpture was uh, uh, crushed down by the government. We try to remade it. Uh, but uh, eventually, I thought, okay, I'm back to my art. And also, uh, I uh, there's also an organization called the Asian American Art Center. Uh, it wants to organize. Uh, exhibition all about uh, um, the artwork to support to uh, Chinese democracy uh, movement. So uh, also one <coughs> of the artists uh, invited by them. So uh, I made, a, the first one I made was the last banquet. Hmm. Now I can show the last banquet. <laughs> yeah, this one. This, this one's uh, the first one in the uh, I call the material mouse series. That's the, that's the first piece. To me, the idea actually is very, very simple because uh, I borrowed the story from Da Vinci's Last Supper, from the from Bible. Uh, in, the, in the Bible, what I learned, uh, the Jesus said, uh, one of you betrayed me. In my painting, Mao said the same, one of you, one, one of you betrayed me. Who betrayed him? actually himself. So I changed the, all the, um, uh, the image on um, Da Vinci's original painting to Chen Mao. Uh, the Judas called the most red book. And uh, all the uh, wine glasses become uh, red spawn. Uh, but uh, uh, the outside the window, it's a great wall. To me, great wall means close because the wall is a divide people, it's divide uh, everything, just a wall, wall is wall. Wall is just a, the only way, only function for wall is divide. So that's, and on, on the wall, uh, you, we cannot see the details. On the wall, I paste the, uh, the pages of a mouse red book on the wall. Mao actually living uh, in his own idea. This one, uh, the the, uh, the international background, which which was uh, in eighty nine, the East European country also started started wash down one by one, and uh, uh, so while painting this one, I thought. Uh, Okay, if Mao representing now, if communism uh, representing the com communist idea, okay, who betrayed, who made communists crush down? Not the Western country, not America, not any other capitalist, but the Mao and the communists themselves. That's the basic background about, about this painting. <laughs> Wow, I love it. Can, 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 uh, 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 add one more short story. Mm -hmm. This one was invited to show in Washington, D.C., in the Russell Rotunda uh, uh, space. Uh, but uh, one week before the opening, I was noted uh, my painting, plus another two paintings, was rejected because of this painting, because the reason was. They are afraid of about this painting will offense religious people. So people have different reason to censor uh, artwork. This one definitely be censored in China, but also before censored in China, censored here first. That's sort of ironic that um Yeah, around the ironic. It is very it is very ironic um that it's you know the exhibition was sort of about censorship and Tiananmen and then your work was censored in in turn. Um, that's that's 
quite, um, it is very ironic and quite unfortunate. I mean, I mean, I love how the pace, the piece is so uh, multi-layered um, and it really, I'm just, I'm looking at it again and it's, it's incredible seeing these different figures of Chairman Mao replacing the, the apostles. Um, and, and what about your other, so this was one of the first works for Material Mao. And can you speak more about the other ones? Okay. Uh, in this uh, PowerPoint, uh, okay, the, the second one. <clears throat> um, this one, the, I try to use Chairman Mao's image. And this image is officially, uh, uh, official image, you can see this image everywhere. I mean, like, uh, oh, I'll, I'll change everything. Like, like uh, anyway, based, based on original official Chinese image, but uh, I use what Mao said in his red book as my quotation. Uh, no, no, you use the quotation from Mao's Red Book as, uh, as, as part of my word on my painting. Uh, actually, this one's not so many painted, but, um, but uh, more like clutch, more like, more like clutch. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, okay, this one, uh, the sec second role on the right, uh, on the left, the mm -hmm. Chairman Mao with Stalin's mustache uh, with, the, with the character, with the uh, uh, text like H I A C S. The same format with Master Duchamp's mustache for Mona Lisa. But, uh, but this is Stalin's mustache. Um, uh, like uh, like uh, that said, uh, Mao with, uh, okay, just, uh, just uh, next. Uh, Mao with a paper tiger, uh, paper cutting, paper cutting, but the tiger image, and his face also painted as 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 tiger, because Mao said uh, uh, the American imperialism is paper tiger, means mm -hmm. not a real tiger. We don't care about you, about your America. Uh, we learned this, uh, this Mao. Uh, uh, um, quotation when I was very young, even when I was a teenager, until I left China, I know more about American. I know American is not paper tiger, <laughs> but Mao himself, uh, so many reasons, he is paper tiger. Basically, just uh, this kind of idea. Like um, oh, yeah, yeah. For the for the Stalin mustache, I only see uh, uh, one more word because later when I show this one in America, I have uh, I have a friend from um, also artist uh, uh, from uh, from uh, 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 Ukraine. Uh, he likes this one. The reason he said because. He stole this one to his country's uh, 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 artist friend. They considered this one more like uh, uh, Stalin is. Uh, now, to me, Mao is China Stalin. To them, Stalin is China, is, is uh, Ukraine's Mao. So that's the way around. Mm -hmm. I thought this is, this is, this is, this is uh personally for this group i like this one <laughs> it's interesting because it works both ways right depending yeah, on both. what your viewpoint is whether you're coming from a chinese background or from um a soviet background mm -hmm. um i also love how you use you know you use collage but i can also see all these different styles here you know there's the sort of picasso cubist mao um in, in the middle row. Uh, so I was wondering if you could speak more about um, your interest in exploration with Western styles. You've, you've touched on it briefly, um, but as, especially your engagement with 
styles such as Impressionism, Cubism, and Post-Impressionism. Um, and it, like what what drew you to work with these? Um, and I'm speaking perhaps more about your uh, Shan Shansui um, series. <clears throat> That's a very very good question. <laughs> um, very interesting, very interesting because uh, yes, I'm not as a many artists uh, focus on one style uh, doing over and over um, uh, forever. One of the reason was. Um, you know, when I come here, 1982, I already 39 years old. But I started very strongly. I started everything all over again from zero. So in this case, I really, I'm, I'm not kidding. I really, you know, physically, not only mentally, you know, physically actually as a, as a child. I, I, I thought myself just, uh, Start my new life here. So I just want to try everything. Uh, uh, of course, I, uh, I learned basic uh, realistic uh, technique. Mm -hmm. uh, the big problem for this kind of technique, which is you can do portrait. You can even make a living with your realistic style of painting. You can make landscape, people's portrait to make a living. But in the same time, you limited yourself. You are not really into the new art world. Uh, in this case, you don't you don't really need to live in China. You can you can even in China you can do the same. There's many artists uh, the bad experience because it's not easy to forget what you learned in China. You know, when you when you learn anything young, you will remember in your whole life. So that's one way for me to to uh, how to say what's the word to forget what I learned in China. Mm. For, for this group, one, two, three, twelve, twelve pages, nothing to do, nothing, nothing to do with the technique I learned in China. But uh, I enjoy to try a different way. I know that's not, not really my, my uh, style. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as a process, as a, as a, for my artwork, as a process, uh, I learned a lot. I learned, I learned the concept. I learned how to, all, how to deeply understand the, the different, uh, different uh, style. Um, so this this one also uh, related to the Shanshui painting you 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 just talked talk about. My first Shanshui painting I used uh, Van Gogh style to redo uh, uh, the ancient Chinese traditional painting from Song Dynasty. More than more than thousand years ago, style. Um, that's uh, I think uh, one, two, three, maybe Why six, or, maybe six or seven years later than this group. Because after this group, I continue working more. Uh, you can see uh, other images in the PowerPoint. Uh, okay. For example, yeah, for the, the, the oh, okay. No, they're okay. For example, this one, the soy sauce mall. <laughs> this one, I literally use soy sauce working on rice paper. And uh, uh, that's the way I treat, uh, no, the way I treat soy sauce as ink. But I make soy sauce meaningful. If you, if you use brown ink, you can do the same way, do, do the same uh, image, even color looks the same, but uh, but the medium is a mutual medium. You can do anything you want. Ink, just ink, oil, oil. But uh, when you use soy sauce, the soy sauce as a medium become part of the content of my work. Mouse, okay, okay, great leader. 
but we Chinese eat three times a day, we use soy sauce. I'm really so familiar with soy sauce. That's my way to, to, to blur the boundary between high and low, between a political leader got like a image and the material, material from daily life. So uh, I also do, uh, did some uh, soy sauce calligraphy. But I didn't show, I, I, I didn't put it in the uh, PowerPoint. So you can see another <coughs> different material. This, that's, that's porcelain, um, Coca Cola bottle uh, with uh, the pattern from Ming Dynasty. That's more, more about culture. Um, uh, that's the same idea with the Coca Cola bottle, but it's a I don't have to say it. It's a uh, <laughs> McDonald Brown, Brown's McDonald with a pattern from Shang Dynasty more than 2000 years ago. Because you know, <clears throat> oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's my first uh, um, painting, oil painting, uh, Van Gogh style, uh, uh, but uh, Fan Quan, or, original Fan Quan's image. Mm -hmm. Because when I come here now, uh, I stay here longer. I got one idea more deeper and more and, and stronger, which is uh, for different culture. I don't want to use this word like, uh, what's the word? Uh, complicated. That's many people asking me, how do you feel? complicated between Chinese culture and the American culture and the Western culture. Actually, now, from my personal experience, they're, they're not compl complicated. They're compli com complicated. Complicated. <laughs> because culture is culture. Culture always can, just like people, like, like, like people's spiritual life, mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, like language, we can, com we can commute each other from from language, from different language. So art, culture, we also can not only commute, we can exchange each other. Uh, we can uh, uh, eventually we understand each other. Uh, uh, I also have a painting uh, showing in this PowerPoint, which is a Ying painting, but uh, Van Gogh's image, Van Gogh, Van Gogh's self-portrait image. Mm. I think on the bottom was a, was a PowerPoint. Oh, okay, yeah, this is the same idea, but different way. It's red paper, uh, ink. But it's a, uh, I re redo Van Gogh's 39 uh, self-painting, self-painting in the style of a Bodhidharma image, a kind of like a Japanese Bodhidharma uh, uh, brushwork. Same with uh, uh, my oil painting, but the uh, but, uh, Chinese ink. No, my, uh, my oil brush from Van Gogh, but the uh, Chinese uh, ink painting from, uh, from Fan Quan, similar idea. But, uh, but uh, this group, basically the idea comes from, com comes from my uh, learning of uh, uh, D.T. Suzuki's Zen Buddhist. Um, that, that, that's really long story. Uh, yeah. I, I only know D.T. Suzuki, Suzuki, Suzuki over here in America. I have to move here. Suzuki was a Japanese guy, mm -hmm. Zen Buddhist. He brought Zen Buddhist to Zen Buddhist started in India, from India to China, from China to Japan, from Japan to, uh, uh, to, to Europe, from Europe to America. This kind of trip, nothing to do with culture, with uh, uh, complicated. But uh, the idea, culture itself, art itself can fly without a passport, mm. can go anywhere because the, this kind of uh, 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 art, music, <clears throat> literature, 
belong to everybody in the world. So if we keep this kind of idea, we don't have we don't have to start any war. I don't, I, don't, I really don't understand. We human beings smart enough to talk to each other, to solve problems. Why, 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 we have, why we have to invent and uh, produce a lot, lot of people to kill other people? That's made me think a lot about what's uh, the function of art. Even art cannot stop war, but uh, art can be a uh, format, can be a medium to make people communicate each other. When I just came here during the eighties, I sometimes I went to the the, uh, the jazz music to listen to jazz. Not so often because uh, not because not not that often. Um, because in uh, yeah, it, it is because because in China jazz was banned, banned by the government. But uh, when I came here, I know jazz actually comes from uh, black people. From working people. Now, later, uh, 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 the white people, intellectual people, musicians work together with uh, black people. That's become the real, become the jazz, uh, become the, the uh, representing American music, kind of. So if jazz can do this, painting, any kind of art format, can do the same. Um, so that's the, that's the function function and and purpose for me to continue art. Okay, that was um, such a beautiful explanation of a, a discussion of your interest in different styles and in expanding into you know the the broader role of the arts, which was one of the questions that I wanted to ask you about. Um, we're almost out of time. I don't see any questions in the Q&A box. So if anyone in the audience would like to uh, quickly jot down a question, this would be the time to do so. Um, but uh, Hong Tu, and you know, I'll just use this last time if, in case there are any questions coming up, but I, to ask one final question of my own. Um, and I, you, so you, you have explained the, you know, your belief in the arts in exchange um, of ideas and, you know, cultural harmony and that, and that cultures don't have to be in conflict. Um, what other role do you see the arts having in, in terms of either politics or social issues or economic issues? Um, are there any specific things that you hope to, specific issues that you hope to address with your art today? Or in any in, in, in current projects that you're working on, like what are what are the pressing concerns now? Um, I want to say something. Uh, maybe heard people from museum, maybe like you from museum, <laughs> because I uh, I just like other artists, I really want to show my work, collect my work. By museum, because if you uh, show show your work in museum, that means you are some certain level, and you 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 already you already recognized by uh, by people. Uh, uh, so that's why when uh, Google Museum collected my uh, last banquet, I was so happy, happy. I tell everybody, but actually now I something changed changed my idea from recently the museum and. And the, and the, and the market, mm -hmm. museum and the market, kind of, kind of too, too powerful, kind of mm -hmm. control, control the art world. People really concerned about uh, what is showing in museum, in the big museum, mm -hmm. maybe not in your your museum. <laughs> Nobody wants to do anything with the cultural revolution. I know. <laughs> <laughs> with Cold World War. <laughs> we're we're not we're not a huge museum. We're not on the level of the Guggenheim or the Metropolitan, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, yes. So so the big museum, of course, they, they have they, people really need them. They they it it, it they make so many important shows uh, to the general public. People really 
the, the that's the, that's the one thing most important thing to me to 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 introducing my experience in New York to my friends outside New York, other other uh, city or especially in China. I also talk about the museum, but uh, the power of the, of the museum should be concerned about how to make the art itself more uh, uh, more with deep and uh, deep relationship with society, with the, with the community. Uh, uh, because I also went to uh, visit the uh, uh, Middle East, uh, uh, Middle West, uh, uh, some place. I went to Kansas. Uh, uh, I went to uh, some small town. I thought they they had lived a totally different cultural life. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing is the uh, the market. The market is really. Sometimes it's good because it makes so many artists uh, uh, can fit themselves. Uh, they can uh, sell, they can get money. That, that's all, all, all good. But when, when the style they sold influence other artists, that's bad. That's, but that's the reality. Mm -hmm. I can tell exactly what happened. People watching um, the auction house action, watching what, who's uh, selling the sky, sky, sky price, price, you know, uh, that's bad influence to art. Oh, of course, that's not only uh, the, uh, the market take your responsibility, mainly artists themselves should take responsibility. You can, you, you should keep, keep your princess, uh, principle, you should just do you know, what, you, what you like to do. But uh, today's situation is not. So I, I think you now, artists, if, if there's an opportunity to go to countryside, to go to another small town, to go to anywhere to do your art, even it's not now not, 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 uh, opportunity to show in Metropolitan Museum, to show in MoMA, that's okay. But you do something in the, in the reality, in the in the in the real, uh, for real people, <laughs> I don't know how to express no. my idea. Yeah, I mean, I think this is actually a, an issue that a lot of museums are are dealing with right now in terms of outreach and how to be relevant and to bring art not just to those fortunate enough to be able to visit the Met or the Guggenheim, but but in terms of outreach to people who don't usually have access to, to these works. And, and so I think that is a very important, it is a very pressing issue in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're unfortunately running out of time. So I'm just going to read one question from the Q and A. I'm sorry that we weren't able to get to all of them. Um, and this, this seems like a nice one to end on. What piece of art are you most proud of? Uh, <clears throat> You know, as an artist, uh, if I don't uh, uh, happy with my work, I don't show my work. So, <laughs> <Good. laughs> yeah, really, really, I, I, I tell you the truth. I, sometimes I keep a lot of, uh, of my work just uh, in my uh, studio. Um, uh, in the same time, I really don't care about uh, gallery and uh, museums reaction about which people has more, you know, no, which work, which work got a more um, positive uh, comment. I'm not really concerned about that. I, I read this, I read the comment, but, uh, but, uh, I, but I'm not, not influenced by the, by the comment. Mm -hmm. So, so far now, uh, people, People call, somebody called me, uh, who's Hong Tong? Oh, the guy painting Mao. <laughs> so I, I also like my ping pong Mao. But in this case, I don't want to also glue with ping pong Mao with, uh, with the, uh, the last supper now, because this, this 
showing in museum much more than other works. Uh, actually, like for example, I didn't show my new work, which is a, a bison series that started three years ago. Uh, uh, recently, uh, at, at, I just jumped to a new uh, theory, still bison, but a new theory. Uh, if you ask me this question, if I answer direct, directly, I like mm -hmm. my new uh, series of bison. The, the bison I'm, series. Yeah, okay. bison, yeah, I'm still working on it. Mm. Um, I got to see the PowerPoint and I think the images, I love them. I love the bison. Um, unfortunately, we only have an hour today. Um, there is There are so many more questions I would love to ask you. Um, but uh, this has been so wonderful to learn more about your artistic production and about your life and just your, your experience in both chi China and the United States. Um, so Hongtu, thank you again for joining us for this program and for, um, and we are so grateful to have Quaker Oats Mao on display um, currently at the museum. And so as a reminder before we sign off, if you haven't had the chance to visit the show, Deconstructing Ideology is up until March 12th, along with a show on East German mail art for Ruth the Sky in Los Angeles. We also have other exciting exhibition related programs on the docket, including a talk on Christianity in Maoist China and the political martyr Lin Zhao, um, which will be given by Professor, Professor Xi uh, Lan. Um, a Chinese calligraphy family day activity, which sounds very fun, and a panel on Chinese international relations under Mao. So for more information, uh, please visit our website, www.vendamuseum.org. Um, Hong Tu, I want to thank you again for joining this talk, for this conversation, and I want to thank everyone for joining this program, and I hope to see you um, at, our, at the museum or in our upcoming programs. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.